Diane, back to you. Thanks a lot, Tony. Well, 29,000 American men die every year from prostate cancer, but there is a provocative new study out that says it's possible, possible to change the disease by changing the way you treat it, by your diet, by your lifestyle. And Dr. Dean Ornish, the man who 20 years ago told us that dramatic lifestyle changes could reverse heart disease, now says the same could be true for prostate cancer. And Dr. Ornish, a clinical professor of medicine at the University of California at San Francisco, joins us this this morning, Dr. Ornish, good to have you with us. Thank you. Good morning, Diane. Congratulations on your recognition by Self Magazine. <laughs> Thank you very much. But now, don't you give me trouble, too, on that as they do around here. Uh, I want to tell everybody, first of all, you had 93 men. You followed them for a year. They divided into groups and volunteered, some of them to continue with their regular diet and lifestyle, and others to adapt a different one. Let's talk about the different one. It's very dramatic. It was a vegan diet. Right, not vegetarian, but vegan, which means what? No meat, no eggs, no, you tell me, what else was forbidden? <laughs> yes, the study was done in collaboration with Dr. Peter Carroll, who's the chairman of urology at UCSF, and the late Dr. William Fair, who was the chairman of urology at Sloan Kettering. And as you say, we took 93 men, we randomly divided them into two groups. All, all of them had biopsy-proven prostate cancer and had elected not to be treated conventionally. That way we could compare them to a group that wasn't getting any treatment. What we found is that after a year, the men who followed a vegan diet and who also made other changes in diet and lifestyle, who exercised, who did yoga, meditation, and who had a support group, that their PSA levels began to decline. PSA, as you know, is a marker for prostate cancer, whereas the comparison group, they went up or got worse. Let me, let me slip in here a second because the exercise they follow was about 30 minutes of walking a day. It wasn't a major change for many of them. And stress was right. key. What did you do to have them reduce stress? We asked them to do a series of stretching, breathing, meditation, imagery, and relaxation techniques, really yoga-based exercises for about an hour a day. All right, the results. As you said, that PSA marker seemed to start declining, but let me be devil's advocate for a second, because some of your colleagues, if you know, said, wait a minute, it declined about 6% in the course of a year. 50% would have been big, but this was right. just 6%. Does that mean that this is still just marginal and speculative? Well, PSA is the best marker we have for the progression of prostate cancer, but it's not a perfect one. But in general, if PSA is declining, or even if it's not rising, it means the prostate cancer is not spreading. And if it's not spreading, you're more likely to die with it rather than from it. And so to that extent, it's significant. But we also looked at some other markers. We found when we added the serum of these patients to a standard line of prostate tumor cells growing in tissue culture, the actual inhibition of the tumor growth was 70% in the men who made these changes versus only 9% in the group that didn't. You say inhibition of growth, but did it shrink the tumor? Well, we, we, we didn't monitor the tumor growth itself in these patients, but in tissue culture, we found that it slowed the progression by 70%. We're going to follow these patients for the next 10 years to get a sense of whether they actually live longer and whether they have fewer spreads of the disease than the people who don't. Uh, the treatment that we're accustomed to, the radiological treatment, the chemotherapy treatments, the surgical treatments, are you saying that they are not necessary based on what you're finding? Oh, absolutely not. We took men who weren't having treatment so that we could have a comparison group to, to look at that wasn't confounded by these other interventions. But whatever the treatment a person has, they may also benefit from changing diet and lifestyle because there's a rate of recurrence following almost any treatment. And this is consistent with two earlier studies that came out earlier this year looking at women with breast cancer. And they found in one study that exercise reduced the risk of recurrence in breast cancer. In another study, so did a low-fat diet. But I also want to emphasize that people have a spectrum of choices. There's the ounce of prevention and the pound of cure. If you're trying to reverse heart disease or affect the progression of prostate cancer, it requires bigger changes than if you're just trying to stay healthy, in which case you have a whole range of different options in diet and lifestyle. Can anybody stick to that diet? A vegan diet is tough. That's no eggs, right? That's, that's tough. <laughs> well, it's compared to what? I mean, again, these are for men who have prostate cancer or who are trying to reverse heart disease. It, it's, it requires big changes in order to get that. I'd, it's one of the reasons why no one showed it before is because they didn't go far enough. But we just uh, completed a review for Medicare of 2,000 men and women who went through hospital programs that we trained through our nonprofit institute. And we found that most people were able to make and maintain these changes. And you know, the old joke is, am I going to live longer? Is it just going to seem longer if I make these changes? Hmm. But in fact, people feel better. Their quality of life improves, and they actually enjoy following it. 
Well, again, Dr. Dean Ornish, it is big news this morning, and I remember the skepticism that greeted you when you talked about reversing heart disease, and then it proved to be the case. Yet again, a provocative actually, study. Thank you. you. Thank you so much.